Hi, I'm Steve Houston. Welcome to another drawing session. This time what we're going to try and do is focus on cohesion, getting every mark to come together, make the whole thing one composition, one pose, one exciting piece of art. So let's get started. All right, I'm drawing just with a cheap uh, uh, fountain pen, or not fountain pen, cheap uh, ballpoint pen. Fountain pens work great too. And I'm drawing something simple enough that it gets the idea of not just a head, but this young lady's head. Simple yet characteristic. The simpler you make it, the more uh, control you have over it. The quicker you can do it, the more you can design or redesign it. And the more characteristic it is, the more finished it will seem. So you can stop in the beginning stage and still get the idea done. So if you only have a minute or so like we have here, keeping it characteristic, taking that extra few moments to make it characteristic is going to go a long way to re, uh, reading the information for the audience. All right. Trying to show you exactly where that shoulder becomes an arm. So we're trying to get some kind of corner that tells us where that jointed part is changing. Now as I warm up doing these one minute poses, I'm going to probably get more and more information down as I go through the poses. The first few poses, I'll probably go a little slow, a little more tentative. I'm getting used to my materials. I'm just stretching those artistic muscles. And uh, so that's going to limit me. And so don't worry about finishing. I'm going to make this a looser head. It's going to lose some of its connection. But I'll get down a little farther. I'm going to let this get a little more wild. Wild. It's almost going to be a caricature. So you can kind of play. You know, play with the limits of how far you want to take things. So a little mark for the elbow. This is coming back this way. Cross this way. Just let it go right off the paper. Don't worry about it. So just kind of feeling the flow of it in this case. Nothing's really anchored in, committed to just trying to get the rhythm of it. Or more slow and deliberate. Yeah, I'm try we're trying to find a balance. Faster you go, the farther, more you can finish. Faster you go, the more inaccurate it will be, and the more uh, formulaic, you'll go to the same solutions over and over and over again. Faster you go, the more you can invent, get the energy without the specifics. So you want to find that balance, how much structure. My stuff has a lot of energy, my personal work, and it's very, very structured, oftentimes kind of superhero type figures. So I, I'm balancing both those. I don't want the, the uh, muscles and the structures get stiff. I don't want the energy to get disconnected and uh, upended. I want them to flow from form to gesture and gesture to form and be fairly seamless. So I'm trying to find a balance between getting that energy of expression, that sense of movement with uh, solid information we can use. Sometimes I'll just draw one part. I'll take that one minute and just do maybe the head. She has these lovely high cheekbones, so I'm going to really kind of explore that socket that holds the eye, the bangs, the hairstyle flowing back. 
there's a squareness to how the hair is gathered in the back. Play that up the ear and here. And then the uh, little nose and lips, chin. And then don't leave it uh, cut away. Show how it flows into the next form that you may or may not have time to explore. And you can see how we can get something that's more accurate but more limited. All right, two minutes. I have more time. So I'm going to take more time, not in the rendering, in the simple construction. One of the things I want to notice is what the whole pose is doing. The whole pose is leaning up and to the left. So if I'm going to screw up, that's the way I want to screw up. I want to make her lean too much. If there is deep perspective, I want to make the perspective too deep. If there's some dynamic pinch, I want to make the pinch too pinching. If she's long and graceful, I'd rather make her a little too long a little too curved and a little too short and a little too straight. So these long axis curves are the visual cues. They tell us graceful, fluid, living, dynamic, and active. She's holding this pose for a moment for us, but she's going to be somewhere else in the next moment. So we want to capture that uh, that uh, dynamic mo that moment, that precious sense of, of the now here. Sounds like some self-help group. We'll call ourselves the precious senses of the hows. Okay, and sometimes I'll just get caught up in, in an area of these hips, doing a little bit of the construction so I can feel that dynamic connection into the upper torso, and I failed to get the legs. I screwed up. Well, no, I didn't. I just didn't finish. Art is never finished. Just do what you can in the time you have. All right, two minutes. The more structure I need, the more dynamic perspective I need, the more corners I need. If you go to my basic drawing classes, lessons, I should say, at the uh, New Masters, I'll, uh, I talk about that in great detail. And it's a big subject. It's not something we can just throw away a few remarks on. My main focus here, well, I don't know if there's a main focus, but because there's so many, it's, it's like juggling uh, eggs. There's several in the air at once. But uh, one of my uh, purposes here is the marks I put down, I want them to ring true, whatever that means. And it's going to mean something a little different to me than you. There'll be certain proportional truths. There'll be certain dynamic uh, anatomical truths, some... Uh, you know, um, kinetic truths, that kind of stuff, balancing truths. But uh, we're not talking about that as much as emotional truths. That's where art has the great power. So does it ring true emotionally? The sense of the figure leaning back or falling over, the sense of a beautiful young woman or a troubled young man or whatever the, the um, personality is behind it. That's what we're after. I'm not finishing. I'm suggesting that kind of te emotional territory or those kind of uh, structural dynamics. If I try and finish, I'll fail miserably. If I try and suggest, then I have a chance. OK, another two minute.
is the head shoulder line and the ponytail or hair bound up there, whatever you'd call that. She has a real hourglass figure that's going to uh, give me a good chance to screw it up because I'm going to make the shoulders too wide and too male and I'm going to probably pinch the hips off at the waist. So I want to make sure I'm really doing that waist justice. I'm refining that gesture line, that connective line, that long axis design line that is a gesture to make sure it's where it needs to be. Feel the weight there. Make that dark mark so we can feel that anchoring weight that's supporting the pose or lap. Two minutes. And uh, what you might want to do as you're drawing this, take the uh, one minute, the two minute, the five minutes to do the drawing, of course. You can cheat a little bit and pause it if you're uh, having trouble and turn the minute into a minute and a half. Don't turn the minute into a 20 minute unless it's something that you really want to do as a separate exercise because it's just a terrific pose you want to work with. But um, try and feel those big sweeping ideas. And what are the key components that make this pose this pose? What's supporting it? What's holding it uh, in a quiet moment rather than it in action? Why isn't it feeling like it's actually falling over? But it feels balanced in some way. There's some support system going on. And I'm just letting the shadow, that's a whole other topic shadows that we won't delve into here, but um, letting those shadows serve the same function everything else does, the gesture and the structure. Coming off that uh, hidden leg to find that, emer or that hidden hip to find that emerging leg. So try and get a sense of the pose. The head's pinching against the shoulders. It's a seated pose, of course, that's leaning over her lap. So leaning, a little bit of dynamic torque going on there as she twists around from uh, shoulder into that head position.
I like this shadow here because that zigzag shows the compression of that hip uh, or that hip being yeah that hip being thrust upon by the upper torso. So we get that nice dynamic there, and it gives us that torque. Shows a the power in this quiet pose. Five minutes. So I'm kind of noticing with this uh, hair, face, neck. Everything's kind of going in different directions, flowing back, zigzagging over, crisscrossing across, crisscrossing across, can you say that? I guess so. And the bangs flowing down. So a lot of uh, fun directions going on. I'm gonna play that up. And then maybe the broad simplicity of this back as one as a series of dynamics over here I'll exploit, but a lot of this back is beautifully simple. So I'll play this complexity of the head with all its stuff against the simplicity of that torso with its um, subdued stuff. And I might, uh, like an ang, ang is spelled like that. Uh, really simplify the contours. So it's this long kind of waterfall, this gentle waterfall of forms that don't, uh, there's no splashes in an ang like there would be in a Michelangelo or um, more dynamic artists, a Lion Decker, Dean Cornwell, Frank Brangwin, that kind of stuff or even a uh, Franz Hall. So the intention is can be completely different, even though the uh, subject matter, the reference even, can be exactly the same. I'm going to come back to this uh, spicy area. I'm going to keep this shadow also pretty quiet maybe even pretty light since it's a subtle shape maybe it has a subtle value to it I'm planning the rendering and then in this area I get um, relatively charged with stuff even the marks over here are subdued light highly edited I'll just play these little design games, even though it's just a sketch, just a little study, just practice time. It's nice if I have a bigger idea in mind. I'm working those artistic muscles, hopefully on a couple different levels, in other words. Not just pin line, not just uh, uh, construction, not just proportion but on several things. A great art works on several levels at once. You might pick one thing to work on in one drawing, but it doesn't always have to be the same thing or the same few things. It can be very rich and, and uh, varied in the choices. 
and should be relief. You know, why are we looking at your figure drawing rather than the millions of others that are on the internet and done through history? What are you going to bring to the table? Maybe not now as you're beginning your career, but eventually as you're well into your career. What are you going to bring to the table that's different, that can be unique? In other words, what are you going to teach me? That's what I want to know from the artists. I want the artists, we all want the artists to teach us how to see the world and by implication how to live in the world. That is the value of art, not just pretty pictures, but informing us on how to live a good life, an interesting life, a challenging life, a uh, whatever life. Difficult form, pretty girl's face, difficult position, tilted in this strong and yet graceful perspective placement. I'm going to slow down. Difficult difficulties demand more careful thinking, more thoughtful execution. I don't want to put anything down that doesn't ring true. should ring true, and that'll mean something a little different to you, probably, than it does to me, and should. That's why I'm going to come to your gallery opening, and somebody else might choose to come to mine instead, because how we see the world is a unique experience. And because we're all unique, that's valuable. We're going to show the world something. We have a voice that um, has value in it. And oftentimes I'll draw very fast because I want to try and get energy into it. I want to try and surprise myself with how I uh, make a mark or design a shape or whatever. Here I'm drawing much slower because it's a subtle pose. I find the really dynamic poses, the left side pose we could have chose. I picked this one because this is harder, I think. It's a subtle pose and that subtlety means that there's minute changes, relatively small changes, and those small changes are each then compounding against the others and creating a complex of forms, a design, a pose, but they have probably less room for error. I can't muck them up as easily. So if I make the hips too big, it's going to make it more dynamic. Maybe for a pose like this, it's going to make it just chubby on the bottom or ungraceful at the top as it is. So now I need to adjust and correct that choice. And I'm going to put a little hatching to hide my screw up, my error there. And I'm taking some of my valuable time to make that uh, correction because it's important that this drawing ring true as best I'm able with the uh, time we're given. So these short poses are designed to make you make choices, make creative, artistic choices. And so they have to be thoughtful, at least at first, when you're learning. You want to consider and think through why. Why is that working? Why is it not working? What am I missing? What could be better? How did I make such a great mark there? Why, did, why is that mark so powerful and so successful? thinking it through and dialoguing with teachers, other artists, with the great masters of the past, let them speak to you, all that kind of stuff. If I have more time, I'll work on the connective tissue.
add some of the shading here. I want to put this arm in. I'm so drawing around the arm, I didn't even notice I didn't get the arm in. It's funny uh, what we see and don't see in life, isn't it? You guys are probably screaming at me to put the arm in, and I thought I had. If you're getting discouraged, you feel like this is too advanced for you because it's a, when you're working from a figure like this, it's intermediate level oftentimes. If you need a little bit more foundational advice on how to begin, maybe even uh, simpler subjects to work with with the figure, come to the new Masters Academy website. We have a lot of content for all levels. So I hope you're drawing all week long. I'll see you next time and good luck.